Hello and welcome from the Journey Museum and Learning Center. My name is Christine and I'm the Education Coordinator here at the Journey Museum. When you leave our wonderful star room here at the museum, you come across our magnificent rock wall that we have. Now, I will be the first to admit that when I first started working here, I was confused on why the Black Hills have these slanted rock layers. I've always learned that rock layers are like the layers of a cake stacked on top of each other with the oldest layer on bottom and the newest layer on top. I was confused because I was wondering how is it that Mount Rushmore, which is carved out of the old granite here at Black Hills, along with Black Elk Peak, how is it that the oldest layers are able to be seen by people? Shouldn't they be at the bottom? Well, I went and investigated this and did some research and I found out the answers to these questions on how we can see the oldest layers and why our layers are tilted. So today I'm going to be showing you with some demonstrations on how the Black Hills were formed. So notice here the different colored layers in here. So like I talked about, there are the layers of the cake, right? But here's the first thing that happened. About 1.6 billion years ago, a great mass of molten rock began to rise from deep within the Earth's crust. As this mass cooled, still well underground, it formed the granite, which is now the core of the Black Hills. So right here, in kind of this orange color, I have that granite that is forming. So the second step that happened with the formation of the Black Hills is after the granite formed, we then have the metamorphosism of the central crystalline area. So basically what we have here in a dark blue is this central crystalline core. So as this mass of this molten rock rose upwards, it came in contact with the older sandstone and shale. This intense heat and pressure melted some of this sedimentary rocks and turned the rest into metamorphic rock. And actually, the Mount Rushmore is located here in the central crystalline core. So the next step then is this green layer that I have drawn throughout here. This happened during the Paleozoic era and it's limestone. So these rocks have been completely eroded away from the central crystalline core, but can be seen on any of the roads heading away from the central Black Hills. So many of these rocks are actually limestone and they were deposited in shallow seas as millions of marine organisms died, settled to the bottom, were buried and converted to sedimentary rock. This layer above the Paleozoic limestone, which is shown here in pink, is the spearfish formation, which in reality is actually red. And it happened during the Triassic era. And then the purple layer above that came during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. So we have all of our layers here now. But what happened was 70 million years ago, the area of the Black Hills began to uplift and that related to the general uplift of the Rocky Mountains. As the Black Hills began to rise, the sedimentary rocks above the crystalline core, so all these three layers right here, began to crack and erode away. So much of that material actually eroded from the 
crystalline core would transport up to 150 miles to the east and forms the rock layers at the Badlands National Park, which is outside of this diagram. So what do the Black Hills actually look like? Well, these top three layers have actually eroded away right here. And parts of the crystalline core as well. So when we have the Black Hills, what the Black Hills actually look like is it's missing all these top layers right here. So when we look here, this is the reason why this granite, which is at Black Elk Peak, is able to be exposed for us to see. And the central crystalline core is also exposed, and that's why we were able to have the Mount Rushmore carved right in there. So that's why we have the oldest layers able to be seen from us today. So let's see this as a demonstration on how it'd work. This blue felt here is representing the central crystalline core. Now remember that the granite formed early on and when it did, it caused this little kind of uprise right here. So here's the granite, there's the crystalline core. So I finished laying down some more layers here. Over here, let's say that this represents the rest of this big crust for the western part of the United States. When the Rocky Mountains were formed, almost like a spatula going underneath a pizza, we had that Pacific Ocean crust subducting underneath. And when it did so, it started to fold up the Rocky Mountains. So they are known as fold mountains. But what's happening with the Black Hills. As the Rocky Mountains are folding up, as you can start to see right here, the Black Hills started to uplift as well. And right above where that granite is, you can see that some of these layers are starting to crack. And as they do, what happened was these layers then start to fall down. I'll give it a little help here. And as it does, they fell off and eroded over to the Badlands. So what we have here is this blue layer on top of the granite, which would be this blue crystalline core with the granite right there. And as you can see, these other layers here from the Jurassic, Cretaceous, Triassic, and Paleozoic eras were all falling off to the side and it's not on top anymore. So that's how the Black Hills were formed. So as we look at our layers here, we will see that the section where the layers are being uplifted there are tilted. And they're tilted again on the other side, which answers the question as to why we have tilted rock layers not only in the museum, but in the Badlands itself. 